Hi friends, it's Sherry. I've had a crazy day. I got caught this afternoon in a torrential downpour that lasted for over an hour. And um, I was a couple of towns over away from home and I was just saying, Lord, please let me get out of this store so that I can get home and, um, and start preparing dinner. And so now it is, I don't even know what time it is. I think it's close to six o'clock. And I'm making this wonderful recipe that I found on Facebook. And I thought, you know what? I bet my viewers would love to see this recipe because it's very simple. It makes a large amount. So if you have a lot of boys and girls in your family, like I once did, you'll have plenty. But if you're a smaller family, like a single person or a family of two, then you'll have plenty to um, have leftovers with or to freeze for another time. And um, so let me show you what this looks like as I'm getting it started. Now, along with this wonderful recipe, I'm making some cornbread. Let me let you peek in my oven because I only have about four minutes left. There it is. It's looking so good and smells good in here. And this recipe is called, um, I think it's called healthy unstuffed cabbage rolls. But basically what it is, it's sort of like a cabbage roll soup. And um, what you do is you take a little bit of oil in the bottom of your Dutch oven and you um, chop one onion. And when those onions are cooked and translucent, then you add in, it called for two pounds of ground beef. But I, I'm only using one pound of ground beef. When I got a pound into my cast, cast iron oven here, I realized that that is a lot. That it, it really filled up um, a big portion of my soup pot. And so I think one pound would be a plenty. And so if you want to go for two full pounds, then go ahead. But this one was like 1.2 pounds. And it was um, the, the least fat that you can buy. It was the 93.7. Okay, sorry, I touched the wrong button. Cut you off, so sorry. But um, because it was such low fat in this, um, it'll retain uh, a lot of the meat portion and, and a lot of it is not grease. And so here you go. This is what I'm using. If you want to follow the exact recipe, you will use two pounds of ground beef. And then you're going to brown this and drain off the fat. Okay, so while my meat is um, cooking along, I'm going to chop up one small head of cabbage and get it prepared to be tossed in. Now, if you want to know the ingredients, I'm just going to go ahead and list those because um, it might be easier for you that are wanting to make this. You're going to have two pounds or one to two pounds of ground beef, an onion, a small head of cabbage chopped, two cans of diced tomatoes and the woman that did this recipe said that the second time she made it she used the fire roasted tomatoes for a little kick and thought they tasted really good in the soup but i just don't happen to have um i don't happen to have that i only have these um let me show you what i've got i've got these just diced tomatoes from you know from aldi and then you're going to also need a can of um tomato paste and you will need a can full of this with water and you will use two cloves of garlic or the equivalent, a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of pepper. And as optional items, you can put in some red pepper, crushed red pepper flakes, which I have some of that. I don't know if I'm gonna use a whole lot of that, but I might use a little bit. And you can also use, um, and that if you do that, it would be a teaspoon. And then also you could put in a teaspoon of cumin and that I don't really wanna put that in either. So um, I think I'm gonna use a little bit of hot sauce and this, that's pretty much all you do. And you hear my oven going off? My cornbread is done, so I'm gonna go take it out of the oven. Okay, so my meat is ready, and in goes um, the diced tomatoes. I'm gonna get another can of those. And then also, I will put in the tomato sauce, and when I, um, no, not sauce, tomato paste. Don't let me misguide you, <laughs> it's tomato paste. And then out of that can of tomato paste, I will fill that back up with water, that's six ounces of water, and um, give that a swish, and then put that into this um, soup pot as well. And then if you wanna see how my cornbread turned out, it's so good. Look how pretty that is. And it's just gonna flop right out of the pan, and it smells like heaven in here, yes it does. Okay, so instead of using just the fresh garlic tonight, I'm going to use this minced garlic that comes in this jar. Um, and it's just something that I like to keep on hand to use in case I don't have garlic on hand. I can always have this um, put back to the side. It lasts a really long time in your refrigerator and um, I tend to use it very quickly in a lot of dishes and it really saves you from having to go to the trouble to chop up all that little bit of garlic for each little dish that you do. And so this is what I will be putting in to my pot now, probably a couple teaspoons of this minced garlic. 
you know, I looked around my house as I was cooking. I was in and out of drawers, and I saw these hot um, sauces here from the Taco Bell. And I've just decided that I'm going to clip the tops off of these, and I'm going to put this into the soup because this will give it a little bit of kick um, without me having to go to the extreme. I really don't love a lot of spicy foods, um, but as I'm getting older, I notice that my palate likes it more and more and tolerates it better. And um, so I don't want it to be very spicy, but I also don't want it to be bland. So this is the way I can use up these packets. So if you have anything lying around your house like this, um, just make use of it in whatever recipe that you have. And it's a, a great way to be frugal and um, not just let things um, lay around in drawers, but to use it up. So I'm gonna toss these into this pot. Okay, so I put my cabbage on top and I put some salt and pepper in there. I actually used garlic salt instead of regular salt. I'm really hoping um, to add just a little more flavor to this soup. The only complaint or the only thing that people had said in the comments was that they did try to kick up the flavor. Some added brown sugar and Worcestershire sauce and just all, all kinds of different things to their to their mixture. Um, but um, garlic is one of our favorite flavors and while I put garlic in this particular pot, I, I thought the garlic salt might add a little extra flavor as well to the cabbage. And so if you can hear that boiling down underneath this cabbage and the cabbage is laid up on top, basically it's just going to steam. And so we are going to put the lid on the top of this. I will come back and check on it in intervals of probably every 10 minutes or so um, till about 30 minutes has passed. And that's about how long they say that this soup is um, takes to be ready and so I will be back to show you the finished product. You can hear my kitty cat. He's meowing at my feet but I thought I would come out and show you my view tonight. It has been a little bit cooler today since all the rains that we had and matter of fact it's sort of overcast right now and they're calling for more rain overnight and there's a breeze blowing. You can see the trees they're blowing there and it is a wonderful feeling. It lets me know that fall is coming. And so I'm standing on my patio and just looking out over this peaceful scene while um, I'm waiting for my meal to be finished. And it's just wonderful to take in the beauty and the quiet for just a moment of time. Okay, so our soup is about ready and my husband is gonna help me while I film this and he is gonna spoon this into the bowls. This is what the uh, the cabbage soup looks like or the cabbage roll soup it really smells good all right there we go so here we go here's my iced tea and there's our cabbage soup and our cornbread with butter we are ready to eat thank you so much friends for watching today for um subscribing to my channel i appreciate you so much and look forward to seeing you next time Bye-bye.